So we use this curette to kind of make nice lateral walls on the lesion. And uh, as we all know from Dr. Stedman, when we have a lesion, we want to get down, get all that calcified layer off the uh, bone, and uh, we want to have a well-walled surgical lesion. So you can see we have a well-walled off uh, grade 4 defect in the femoral trochlea. And I like to use uh, this uh, torpedo shaver to, re uh, to remove any of the loose uh, articular fragments from the periphery of the lesion. Uh, now you can see I have a bone cutter uh, in here, and I'm going to use the bone cutter on the base of the lesion to remove all the calcified layer from the subchondral bone. Uh, so I use a combination of a, a bone cutter uh, and a sharp curette from Arthrex to, uh, to basically get this down to clean subchondral bone. Okay, we're now uh, coming in with our power pick to form a microfracture. I'm going to put one right in the middle here first. My go-to is uh, to use the 45-degree uh, power pick to do my microfractures. Uh, I find it to be twice as fast as the standard uh, Stedman picks. Our next step is we're going to go ahead and uh, harvest the autogenous uh, articular cartilage uh, from the patient and then combine that uh, with our biocartilage. And we've got this uh, great new product, the GraphNet, uh, which will uh, capture the uh, pieces that we harvest uh, in the actual net and allow us to use them to transfer to the, uh, to the actual lesion. Uh, and there are several sites, so just like if you were to do uh, harvest a oats, uh, there are several sites that you can take it from. This is a left knee specimen, so you can take it from the lateral femoral condyle on uh, this location here. Uh, another good place to take it is uh, from the intercondylar notch, uh, right on the edge uh, of the intercondylar notch would be another good location from the, either the lateral femoral sulcus uh, or the uh, medial side. So in this particular specimen, we're going to go ahead and take it from the uh, uh, intercondylar notch on the lateral side here, uh, and I like to use the Arthrex uh, bone cutter to harvest this uh, articular cartilage, um, and uh, you can see it's pretty effective about taking the fragments, and uh, it's all being caught right now in the graft net. Another good location uh, to harvest the articular cartilage from uh, would be right on the uh, lateral edge of the uh, lateral femoral condyle uh, on the proximal aspect and uh, is another good location to take it from. And I like using the bone cutter for this. See, it very nicely takes uh, nice fragments of the articular cartilage uh, in a relatively atraumatic fashion. So you can see we have our uh, shaver and the graft net um, in line uh, with the suction. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and, and uh, take a look at what we've harvested. So I'm going to take it off of the shaver um, and um, uh, it just simply screws apart here. And then there's this little plunger here, uh, and we can literally pull out the articular cartilage. And you can see we've got a nice, nice harvest of uh, the patient's own art articular cartilage uh, that we'll now go ahead and mix with biocartilage uh, and uh, autogenous fluid, uh, either PRP or bone marrow aspirate, depending on your preference. Okay, we're looking at the uh, biocartilage uh, mixing kit, uh, and you can see it comes. Uh, with this nice uh, funnel loaded on a syringe. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn that up like this. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And we got about a half cc. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take the patient's autogenous articular cartilage, uh, and we're going to go ahead and put this in the uh, biocartilage uh, syringe system here. This is a cc of the uh, biocartilage. So we're going to use about half of it so it matches the, about the same amount of our articular cartilage. The last thing we're going to add now is the patient's um, autogenous uh, fluid. Uh, in this case, it happens to be a PRP. And uh, it's, the ratio is 1 to 1 to 1, so we're going to use about a half cc of the patient's uh, 
uh, autogenous fluid. So we've now capped the syringe, uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and remove uh, this piece. Uh, now this becomes into a mixing syringe. So we've nicely uh, mixed the biocartilage uh, with the patient's own articular cartilage, and we have a nice uh, mixture of the two. Now we're going to turn it back into a delivery syringe from a mixing syringe, and we're just going to snap this back into place. Now we're back to a delivery syringe, and we're going to take off this distal cap. And uh, we're going to put it on. Uh, this is a beautiful delivery instrument for the cartilage uh, to the lesion. We recommend uh, that uh, you do preload the uh, uh, cartilage mixture so that uh, it's right at the edge of the uh, delivery apparatus. So I'm going to remove the syringe now. And uh, this is going to serve as a plunger. Then I'm going to go ahead and slide in here. And you can see how I've already begun to express some of the donor articular cartilage. We're back in the knee, uh, and uh, we're drying the lesion now with the uh, suction swab. And you can see how nicely this really dries the area. I'm going to introduce now the spatula and delivery system. Uh, you can see here's our articular cartilage. I'm going to go ahead and deliver that. Great. I'm just going to kind of now kind of work that into the lesion. So you can see we very nicely backfilled the lesion with the combination of the articular cartilage that we got from the graft net combined with the scaffold of the biocartilage uh, and the patient's uh, own autogenous uh, fluids. Once we've uh, backfilled this, uh, the next step would be to go ahead and to seal it. And uh, you certainly can use uh, fibrin glue in sealing these lesions.